This is an update from Tallahassee from the Florida Association of Homes and Services for the Aging. Hello, my name is Carol Berkowitz. I am the Senior Director of Regulations and Legal Affairs for the Florida Association of Homes and Services for the Aging, FASA. Welcome to FASA's weekly highlights from the Hill. FASA leads the way. We are featuring weekly video clips to serve as an educational tool for FASA members. We hope by doing this we will deliver important legislative and regulatory news to you from Tallahassee. This week marks the ninth week of the 2011 regular legislative session. We are approaching the home stretch and hopefully we will be able to end on time on Friday as scheduled. Let's first talk budget. Formulating and approving a budget is the only duty our lawmakers are constitutionally mandated to fulfill during the 60-day regular legislative session. On Tuesday of this week, the House and Senate Budget Conference Chairs, Representative Den Denise Grimsley and Senator J.D. Alexander, reached a final agreement on the state's $68 billion spending plan. The lawmakers were notified late on Tuesday that the budget was available for them to start reading setting in motion a constitutionally mandated 72-hour waiting period before they can vote. This means that we can expect to sign a die or end the legislative session before midnight on Friday, May 6. Nursing home funding was a closely watched issue during budget negotiations, with the Senate trying to avoid cuts for the nursing home Medicaid rates. In the end, the Health and Human Service budget included close to $700 million in Medicaid rate cuts which includes a 107.5 million cut, or 6.5% budget reduction for nursing homes. The budget also allows for staffing flexibility, which means weekly averages of 3.6 combined CNA and licensed nursing, and a minimum of 2.5 hours for CNA staffing per resident per day. The state's lean spending plan calls for widespread sacrifices across the state resulting in elimination of more than 5,000 state jobs, deep cuts to hospital and health care providers, less money for public schools, tuition hikes for college students, and a drop in student financial aid. The budget deal also requires Florida firefighters, teachers, police officers, and other public employees to begin paying 3% of their salary toward the pension. As for nursing homes, one very interesting and somewhat controversial bill was debated this week. On the House floor on Monday, a pro-nursing home bill that's House Bill 661, sponsored by Representative Matt Gates, was heard. This bill limits the total non-economic damages filed against a nursing home to 300,000, regardless of the number of claimants in a suit electing wrongful death damages. The bill also requires the court to hold an evidentiary he hearing to determine if there is a reasonable basis to decide if an officer, director, or owner of a nursing home acted outside the scope of their duties in order for a lawsuit to proceed. The bill would also require a claimant to elect survival damages or wrongful death damages no later than 60 days before trial. During the debate, a number of unfriendly amendments were introduced, and they failed. These amendments would have allowed families to place Grammy cams or videos in the residents' rooms, whistleblower protection for employees, criminal conduct in nursing homes to be reported to law enforcement, arbitration agreements to be state approved, nursing home payments to be paid for outstanding judgments or settlements as a condition of licensure or renewal. And finally, ACA would have to publish information about nursing home family councils in a mandated report. The House bill voted favorably and it's now on its way to the Senate. The Senate Companion, Senate Bill 1396, sponsored by Senator Ellen Bogdanoff, remains tied up in the Senate. There are still many controversial bills looming at this time, such as immigration, hospital medical malpractice, pill mills, Medicaid reform, and unemployment compensation, to name just a few. FASA's public policy team plans to be here until the end. Watch for a full report after session and look for information on how to register for the end-of-session conference call scheduled on May 16th. Thank you.